Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Cenozoic, the island continent of South America was home to a unique assemblage of animal groups, some of which have been covered in previous videos on this channel. Although some lineages, such as the Dryolestan mammals and Sibecosuchia notosuchians, were already present during the late Cretaceous, the majority were immigrants that arrived in the aftermath of the KPG extinction event. These Paleocene newcomers included the forest rachid terabirds, placental mammals such as the Xenarthrans and the Meridiungulates, and, most importantly for this video, the Metatherians. Originating on the northern continent during the Cretaceous, these animals gave birth to tiny fetus-like offspring and possessed a unique tooth structure consisting of roughly five upper and four lower incisors, a canine, three premolars and four molars. Multiple lineages of metatherians appear in the early Paleocene fossil-bearing deposits of South America, having dispersed from North America, probably by island hopping. Other mammal groups, such as the ancestors of the Litopterne ungulates, made the journey at about the same time, and similarly radiated out in an explosion of evolutionary diversity. One particular metatherian lineage would go on to become South America's only devoted carnivorous mammals until the late Miocene arrival of the Procyonids. These were the Sporacidonts. Appearing very suddenly in the fossil record during the earliest Paleocene, it was once thought that Sporacidonts were true marsupials although more recent studies have disproven this, suggesting that they were more basal marsupialiforms instead. If this is the case, as seems likely, then these animals probably originated during the late Cretaceous, possibly on the northern continents, although no remains dating to this time have so far been found. During the later Cenozoic, Sporacidonts diversified into a wide array of carnivorous forms that displayed anatomical features and body plans that converged on the carnivorans and marsupials present on the other continents. The oldest and most basal Sporacidonts are known from the early Paleocene Tiupampa fossil locality in Bolivia, dated to between 64.5 and 62.5 million years ago. The most well-represented genus here was the small, opossum-like Myulestes an arboreal animal with an elongated, probably prehensile tail, and teeth that were adapted for a degree of carnivory. Dwelling in a tropical forest environment, Myolestes was similar to modern Monodelphus opossums in terms of size and appearance, and, like them, fed on a mixture of frogs, insects, and reptiles up in the canopy. Other basal forms have been identified from late Paleocene and Eocene deposits, including the similarly small and carnivorous genus Patene, which is represented by four species. In all, the early fossil history of Sporacidonts is quite poorly understood, with most genera represented only by teeth or partial jawbones. It would not be until the Oligocene that remains attributed to these animals would become more commonplace and widespread. However, basal forms must have remained somewhat successful, as the genus Honda Delphis persisted until the Middle Miocene in Colombia roughly 13 million years ago. Represented by incomplete jaws and skull material, Honda Delphis was an omnivorous, quoll-like animal that was probably at least partially arboreal, retaining the ancestral lifestyle of Sporacidonts as a whole. A close relative, Stylocinus, was present during the late Miocene in what is now Argentina and Venezuela, being a more massive animal about the size of a large dog. Like Honda Delphis, analysis of its teeth suggests a hypocarnivorous diet for the genus, with less than 30% of Stylocinus's caloric intake consisting of meat, being something of a metatherian equivalent to a modern black bear. Following on from this, we come to a more derived and widespread family, the Hathlia cynidae. Originating during the Oligocene, these were strongly carnivorous forms, with elongated narrow snouts and slicing premolars. Members of this family range from Martin to Thylacine-sized, and were somewhat similar to Mustelids in appearance. The wolverine-sized Middle Miocene A. Scion was native to Bolivia and possessed pointed jaws, perfectly adapted for feeding on rodents and small notoungulates. Meanwhile, the long-bodied, short-legged Cladocictus dwelt in the more open, semi-arid forests of Patagonia and probably targeted burrowing prey, such as the rodent-like notoungulate Interotherium and the rabbit-like Pachyrucos utilising its low body profile to effectively stalk prey. 
In addition, bite marks likely pertaining to Hathlia cyanid sporacidons have been found on the remains of penguins and flightless marine ducks in ancient seabird nesting colonies, suggesting that these animals raided the colonies for eggs, carrion and other prey like many predatory mammals do today. The Hathlia cyanids were the sister group of the more derived sporacidont clade, the Borhyenoids. These were generally larger and more powerfully built than their more basal relatives, being mostly terrestrial and better adapted for life out in the open. Borhyenoids originated during the Middle Eocene, although fossils belonging to the group were rare until the Oligocene. Indeed, the most basal known forms hail from the mid to late Miocene, leaving a substantial ghost lineage. A good example of such basal forms was the genus Lycopsis, which was native to Argentina and Colombia between 16 and 9 million years ago. Known from an almost complete skeleton, which is unusual for sporacidonts, Lycopsis was a long-snouted, relatively generalised animal that probably resembled modern procyonids, being about the size of a small dog. Although still capable of climbing, the genus was more at home on the ground and possessed an omnivorous diet comparable to that of some modern canids such as coyotes. Lycopsis probably preferred more heavily forested habitats than its larger, more derived relatives, where it could hunt for rodents, reptiles and small notomungulates, supplementing its diet with fruit and invertebrates. A slightly more derived early Miocene borhyenoid, Prothylocinus, was more specialised for active predation. Despite the name, this was not a particularly thylacine-like animal, possessing an elongated body, heavy tail and relatively short limbs. Measuring about 2 metres or 6 feet 6 inches long and weighing up to 30 kilograms or roughly 66 pounds, Prothylocinus was an ambush predator with a powerfully built skull, in some ways resembling a very large modern quoll. Still capable of climbing, this animal probably targeted smaller notoungulates, which would have been stalked and wrestled to the ground before a fatal bite was delivered to the throat or to the back of the skull. The first major family of sporacidonts that consistently reached larger sizes, however, were the Borhyenids. First appearing in the fossil record during the late Oligocene, but probably originating in the Eocene, these were low-slung hypercarnivores with powerful skulls equipped with crushing dentition. The group is best known from the early Miocene deposits of Patagonia, with remains being rare and fragmentary elsewhere in South America. The type species, Borhyena, was native to this region between 17 and 15 million years ago, and displayed typical features of the family, including a large robust skull, strong neck and modestly cursorial limbs. About the size of a modern Indian wolf, although more heavily built, Borhyena weighed up to 23 kilograms or 51 pounds, and was capable of crushing bone similar to hyenas or the Tasmanian Devil. Its Oligocene relative Australohyena was even larger, being about the size of a cougar and possessing a huge blunt-snouted skull. Borhyenids as a whole may have persisted into the late Miocene, but are only known from very fragmentary remains beyond the early part of the period. The potential sister group of the Borhyenids were the similarly named Pro-Borhyenids, which are known from definitive specimens that date to the Eocene. These animals can be distinguished from other sporacidonts by their grooved upper and lower canines, which grew continuously throughout the animals' lives, similar to the incisors of rodents. The oldest and most basal member of the group was the genus Callisto, which was native to the Salta province of Argentina about 50 million years ago. Approximately 2 metres, or 6 feet 6 inches long, this was one of the first terrestrial sporacidonts, possessing large curved claws which suggest strong digging ability. Unlike later proborhyenids, the skull of Callisto was quite narrow and elongated, being superficially similar to that of a thylacine. These features suggest that it hunted small fossorial prey, such as rodents, armadillos and typothea notoungulates. More derived members of the family grew to substantially more massive sizes and became adapted for big game hunting. The Oligocene Bolivian genus Paraborhyena was about the size of an American black bear, with a head to torso length of almost 1.5 metres and an estimated weight of between 100 and 125 kilograms. With a robust blocky skull, ever-growing canines and shearing molars, 
Parabore Hyena would have been an ambush predator, well suited to crushing bones and taking on prey items significantly larger than itself. However, the youngest and most impressive member of the group was the fearsome Probore Hyena, the most massive carnivorous metatherian to ever live. About the size of a grizzly bear and weighing up to 250 kilograms or 551 pounds, this predator was a hypercarnivore that targeted bulky, slow-moving prey, such as the bizarre pyrotherium with which it shared its environment. Too heavy to be a cursorial specialist, Probore Hyena probably relied on at least partially forested conditions in order to hunt effectively, which spelled trouble for the animal when a drying climate led to the extinction of its favoured prey items at the end of the Oligocene. The final and youngest lineage of Sporacidonts were the highly specialised Thylacosmilids. With huge blade-like canines and a vaguely feline appearance, these animals are often considered to be the metatherian equivalent of the saber-toothed cats, although more recent studies have heavily criticised this view. There were several differences between Thylacosmilids and the other saber-toothed mammals, and these unique traits diagnose the family. These include canine teeth that grew continuously, less specialised carnassial molars, and tremendous flange-like outgrowths of the lower jaw that protected the sabre teeth. These traits have made placing the group within the broader sporacidont phylogenetic tree to be quite difficult. It has been proposed that Thylacosmilids may have been a highly specialised offshoot of the Proborhyenids, given that both groups possessed ever-growing canines. However, this remains a controversial opinion. First appearing in the early Miocene, four genera are known which lived across most of South America. Most are represented by pretty scrappy remains, although enough material has been found to suggest that basal forms were quite small and were probably ambush predators. By far the most famous genus was also the last, Thylacosmilus. About the size of a large leopard and weighing up to 120 kilograms or 260 pounds, this extremely specialised carnivore inhabited what is now northern Argentina from the late Miocene to the Pliocene, with enormous sabre teeth, strong neck muscles and a very wide gape. It had traditionally been assumed that Thylacosmilus was a Smilodon-like ambush hunter that killed prey by puncturing the throat and severing the carotid artery. Biomechanical studies have shown that the jaws were very weak, even in comparison to other sabre-toothed predators which, when coupled with the small and reduced cheek teeth, have led to suggestions that this animal may have been a scavenger adapted for feeding on soft internal organs. However, no other organism, either living or extinct, possesses such a lifestyle, with a 2021 paper by Melchiona et al. concluding that Thylacosmilus more likely fed on the internal organs of prey that it had already killed with the animal taking specialisations associated with saber-toothed predators to an extreme. Inhabiting savannah-type ecosystems, Thylacosmilus likely stayed away from the more open areas in order to avoid the cursorial forest rachids, which were more at home out on the plains. It was once thought that competition from the placental carnivorans that arrived in South America during the Great American Interchange led to the extinction of this odd animal although Thylacosmilus died out at least one and a half million years before the arrival of saber-toothed cats from North America. It is more likely that the uplift of the Andes Mountains, when combined with cooling temperatures after the mid-Miocene climatic optimum, led to environmental changes that were simply too much for this highly specialised carnivore. Sporatodonts as a whole began to decline during the second half of the Miocene, with the Thylacosmilids being the only family to persist into the Pliocene. The reasons for this are still much debated, although competition with carnivorans does not seem to have been a factor. Perhaps these relatively stocky animals were simply unable to adapt to the spread of more open plains and grasslands. It is also noteworthy that the similarly predatory Sebecosuchians also died out at around the same time suggesting broader faunal turnovers in late Miocene South America. Sadly, by about 3 million years ago, these predaceous metatherians succumbed to extinction, with their roles now taken by canids, felids and mustelids. However, sporacidonts remain a reminder of the incredible effects of convergent evolution and the adaptability of metatherians as a whole, a group which are often dismissed as bizarre and archaic unable to hold their own against placental mammals. Thanks for watching everyone. 
In the next episode I'll be covering the controversial early evolution of Ornithischian dinosaurs, and their potential relationship with the Triassic Silesaurids. See you again soon. Cheerio.